Here's a log from Cookie9. Hello, Cookie9, uh, who is asking for tuning advice. Having a hard time with Betaflight 3 and Black Buck making sense of the logs. They seem very spiky. I feel the D could be raised, but apart from the prop wash, I'm pretty happy with it. Very interested to hear your thoughts. Uh, okay, let's see. We've got uh, Racer Star, BL Heli S, ESCs. Those are very good ESCs. Uh, very good for the price. They are, uh, I think I've heard that they're exactly the same as the cicadas, that they're made in the same factory. They're just, I don't know. I mean, I've heard they're basically cicadas. So that's nice. Um, stock motors, so they're probably not, these are Ishin Falcon motors, whatever comes on that. So they're probably not spectacular. I love this prop, King Kong 5x4x3 prop. Uh, it's not the most thrusty prop, but if you're trying to get a good smooth tune, it's a good prop because uh, it can. it's not such a heavy prop that it'll have a hard time accelerating. So it's a light enough prop that you could probably get a good tune out of it. You've got the FlySky i6 transmitter, and I've got the same transmitter that came with my Falcon 210. And I have to say, I mean, it's for, for whatever, 45 bucks, it's fine, but I'm, it's, I'm not super impressed with it. The, the dead band on the gimbals is terrible. Uh, the channels don't center at 1500. They're constantly wavering, and I had to add a ton of dead band to get it to go away. Um, and, and just so, I mean, it's, it's great as your first transmitter, that's fine, but when you upgrade to a better transmitter, you, you will really appreciate the improvement in the gimbals. And I know people like to pick on the gimbals of, say, Tyrannus, but I have to say that, you know, the difference between the Tyrannus and a much higher end radio, I think is like you're going from like 95 to 97%. And the difference between the gimbals on like the Flysky i6 and the Tyrannus is like going from, you know, like 45% to 90%. So um, big improvement. I've flown, a, uh, somebody sent me, uh, let me use their DX6, Spectrum DX6, and I wasn't super impressed with the gimbals on it. Um, maybe the higher end Spectrums have better gimbals, uh, but um, the DX6, one of the things I noticed was that at the very bottom of the throttle travel, if you press on the throttle stick a little harder or a little bit softer, the bottom point would change, whereas on my Tyrannus gimbal, that doesn't happen at all. It's just dead locked, no matter how hard you're pressing on it. So anyway, uh, that's your gear, CC3D. Okay, fine. It's a fine board. You got Betaflight V3 on it. Can't complain about that. And let's see what you're looking at. The first thing you say is that at 228 is a move just for me. So, all right, let's jump to 228. Oh, <laughs> yaw spin. I still am. I, I still am working on my yaw spins. I learned that the secret to a good yaw spin is to get the copter flat. So you don't center the horizon because then your up tilt will require you to coordinate the turn. But you find the spot where the horizon is in your camera, where the horizon is, the copter is actually flat, and then you can yaw spin all day long without having to coordinate it. So I haven't worked on that trick, but that's a very nice yaw spin. Well done, well done. So let's go ahead and take a look. You're, you're thinking your log might be too spiky, and you feel degain should be raised. Degain would certainly help get rid of that prop wash that you're dealing with. So. Uh, let's see what we could see. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go to your gyros and we'll just look at your gyros first. I'm going to turn smoothing off. I'm going to press the S key to turn smoothing off. You want to see the actual data and I'm going to zoom out. So this is a pretty noisy copter. Look how thick the pitch and roll lines are. Now, sometimes they get thin when you throttle down. You see how thin they are here? That's what a clean and noise-free copter would look like. When you raise the throttle, it gets super, super noisy. And what this tells us is most likely that your motors are out of balance. I'm, I'm picking on your motors because you're using the King Kong 5x4x3 props, and I haven't had any problems with vibrations on those props. And I, you said you were using the stock motors from Iashin on this, and so they're the most obvious thing that's causing this terrible vibration. This is gonna really limit your ability to tune prop wash specifically. And the reason for that is that in general, you, you get rid of prop wash by raising D gain, but you can only raise D gain so high before the amplification of noise makes the motors get hot. So the more noise you have, the lower your D gain has to be. You see the problem? The, the less noise your copter has, the more you can raise D without the motors getting hot, and therefore the more easily you can get rid of prop wash. 
So I would be thinking of a lot of good gear on this copter. I would be thinking about putting new motors on it. Uh, I'm guessing that that's the reason why the copter is so noisy. Let's go ahead and take a look now at your PIDs. We're going to look at the PID, the roll PID. Again, I have smoothing off here, and I'm going to zoom in now to 100%. And I, 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 what I'm noticing here is that you have a lot of P-term activity, the red line here. You have a lot of oscillation there. I almost find that the PIDs are harder to analyze with the smoothing off, and I like to add some smoothing just the default smoothing to help me see what's really going on there. You can see that here the PIDs look super active, but if we put just a little bit of smoothing, it doesn't look too bad. And the thing is, if, as long as you're consistent in using the same amount of smoothing every time, then you'll be able to get a perspective on what looks like too much of P-term oscillation and too little. The problem here is that we have a lot of high frequency components going on here. And it's very difficult to analyze what the p-term is really doing with these high frequency components being active here. So you can certainly look at it with smoothing turned off and see if it's going just bonkers crazy. But we see here that it's not going crazy. Yes, it's very spiky here. That's true. But in general, it's not like just off the charts crazy with its magnitude is not too big. It's just some high frequency stuff here. So we knew that was there because we looked at the gyro. So I'm going to put the smoothing on, and let's just have a look at what's going on. And I'll play this forward, and I'll start looking for, there was a little bit of prop wash there. As you punch, as you raise the throttle. Yeah. A little roughness there. Interesting. A little roughness. Maybe just some, uh, I don't know, that's interesting. That's interesting. Hard to say what would cause that. Here comes your yaw spin. Very nice. Very nice. Looks very good. A little prop wash oscillation there. Roughness. There. See the camera kind of bouncing? I wonder what's doing that. It's hard for me to... It doesn't feel like that's in your tune. Uh, it just doesn't feel that way to me. Uh, yeah. Not, your, your rates are not super high. But I, I didn't see a bounce at the end of your flip, but since your rates are not super high, that may not mean much. I would be trying to figure out if the camera was snug with the way this sort of yeah, this bounciness is happening. It doesn't feel like a tuning issue. It just doesn't look that way. It just because just I've looked at a lot of this stuff, that's what I would have to say. I would be definitely seeing if the board in the camera was secure, if the lens was secure. I'm seeing just sort of a random sort of bouncy roughness that I don't feel like is tuning related. Your tune overall looks pretty good. Uh, I'm not seeing any unwanted motion uh, in response to the throttle. Your flips and rolls are smooth. See right here, it's just sort of all over the place, bouncy, bouncy. But your flips and rolls are ending smoothly, although the rates are low. Um, everything looks decent. Uh, the, the only thing I see here, as you said, is your prop wash which is one of the last things we try to get rid of. Usually it's the most challenging thing to get rid of. So what I would say is I would be looking at replacing your motors is my best guess. You can run up the motors on the, on the uh, motors tab and look at the accelerometer. Uh, I've, shown, I've had some videos where I show how to do that. And you can look at how much vibration they have. And if you spin the motors up and they have, you know, 0 0.03 is the number on the accelerometer then they're clean as a whistle and it's something else but knowing that those are the stock motors that came with the ESG Falcon 250 I'm guessing that that's probably where your vibration is coming from don't just I mean if the thing is I was about to say don't just throw them out check them out first see if that's where the vibration is coming from but you have such a so much other good gear on the copter why not just put some good motors on there too you know and then uh, if, if the vibration is coming from somewhere else, well, what have you lost? You, you can, now you have an awesome set of motors. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Thanks for submitting. Hope it's helpful. Happy flying.